Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you. Happy Friday, Hope College. Do you feel it? The whole creation is defined. Oh, it's beautiful. We've got some guests that are checking out whether they want to discern be part of the Hope family. We want to welcome you today to Hope College. We're so grateful that you're here. Real quick, uh, a couple notices. One, I want to apologize to the baseball team sitting back there because I, I promised to wear my sweatshirt that they got me. The Hope College baseball. They got a game tomorrow, and it was in the washer. It didn't get dried. So, Chippy, I'm sorry. Chippy's also a senior. He's got like four more weeks, and he's like highly dateable. So, if anyone, it's a full-service chapel, people. The second thing I want to second thing I want to say is um, check your emails. There is um, there's a survey that um, the college is putting out asking us to kind of uh, get your assessment on how we're doing as a college for Christian formation. So help us help you. So if you could take ten minutes, check that out in your email real quick. And the third is I want to invite you to the gathering this Sunday where we continue our series on prayer. Lauren Taylor will be speaking. And before you launch off into the summer, wherever you go, prayer is one of those things, one of those disciplines we just want to take with you. And I, this time of the year, there's always a scripture I love to come back to because there's always so much going on. There's so much things to worry about, things in the air. There's your final exams and papers and lots of just competing voices going on. And here's a scripture that I love that kind of refocuses my attention. So Hope College, I want to I pray this scripture over us. So close your eyes and join me and just listen to this prayer from Paul. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus, today, we pray over Hope College that your peace would guard our hearts and our minds. Help us lean into the truth that you are near. And in that reality, Lord, take away all worry, wherever, there, wherever that worry is present, that in you, Christ, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, we might be one. And in one, Lord, we might embody the hope that is worthy of our institution's name. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, everyone said, amen. Hope College. It's my great privilege today to introduce to you an alumni, Renee Nichols. Campus Ministries is partnering with uh, the Career Development Center and Dale Austin in bringing back graduates who just are a little bit farther down the road than you so that we can actually prove to you empirically that there is life after college. <laughs> Renee Nichols graduated in 2001 with a nursing major. She's been a nurse for 14 years and she is currently the area director with InterVarsity's Graduate and Faculty Ministries in Chicago, still a practitioner in the nursing arts. And she's come to, back to her Hope family to share her experience and wisdom. Would you please give a warm, passionate, glowing, over-the-top, enthusiastic <laughs> for Renee Nichols. Thank you. Good morning, Hope College. It's great to be here with you. When I lived in Walmer's Cottage, I would often spend time in the evenings out on the fire escape, and I would look out at this chapel, and I could see the yellow cross lit up at night, and it was there that I would dream, and I would ask God, what do you have in store for me in the future? And so it's really amazing to be back with you here today. As I've been thinking and reflecting back on my time at Hope and the years since I graduated, I realize that it's been marked by several invitations from God along the way. These have been invitations to something new, invitations to listen to his leading, and invitations to be stretched. And I see now that those invitations were uniquely designed for me in the way that he knows that he's created me. And the same is also true for you. 
the invitations that God extends to you are because he knows you deeply. He knows your dreams, the gifts that he gives you, and also the things that bring you joy. So today I want to share with you a few of the invitations from God that I've experienced in my life and allow you also to have some time to ask God what his invitation may be for you today. So I grew up in a suburb just north of Detroit in a Christian family, and I went to Lutheran schools my whole life, from three-year-old preschool through 12th grade, and I met a couple of students last night who had the same experience. Um, So it was in this community that I learned a lot about God. I memorized Bible passages in school. I went through confirmation. And I was that kid who tried really hard to always do the right thing. If I had continued on, um, I probably would have also gone, if I had been a good Lutheran, go to a Lutheran school. But instead, God called me here to hope instead. He invited me into something new. And it was actually in this chapel when I was a prospective student, that I felt God inviting me to experience more of him in this Hope community. Soon after arriving at Hope, I joined a Bible study with other women in my Dykstra cluster, and it was there that my faith and perspective on God really grew. I had never been in a Bible study before where being curious about the text was so important. We talked about the cultural context of the passage and the original intent of the authors. And I realized that I didn't need to be worried about getting the answer right, but I could instead just be excited about what God would reveal to us through his word. God's invitation to me in the summer after my sophomore year was to continue to listen to his leading. I came to Hope as a pre-med student, but I was discovering more and more about my intentions for choosing that path, and it wasn't for good reasons. I felt like it was all about impressing people and proving that I could do it than actually feeling that that was where God was leading me. So during this summer, I did an internship with a woman named Nadine. Nadine was a nurse practitioner, and she worked in a clinic that was mostly for homeless people. And she had a very unique way of caring for people. She truly saw them as created in God's image and worthy of the utmost respect and dignity. Her belief was reflected in the way that she cared for others. And as I watched her love and care for others and really reflect God's love through her, I realized that I wanted to be able to care for others in that same way. I began to pray and ask others to pray alongside me about God's direction for my life, and they all confirmed that it truly seemed that God was calling me into nursing. God's invitation then was to continue to listen to his voice. I attended InterVarsity's Urbana Student Missions Conference the last year that I was here at Hope. And standing there in worship, I heard not an audible voice, but I heard God very clearly say to me, Renee, I did not call you into nursing for your glory, but for my glory. And it had to sink in, so I probably heard it again. Renee, I did not call you into nursing for your glory, but for my glory. And I knew then that I probably would not be working in the prestigious places that I had been thinking of, but working in places that most people had never heard of before but I would be exactly where God wanted me to be. I was learning what it looked like to abide in him, and we see this in John 15 as Jesus is teaching his disciples. He says, abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. By listening for God's voice, I was learning what it could look like to abide in him, and it was good. After college, God's invitation for me was to be stretched in new ways. In New Mexico, I had the experience for the first time of being the minority in a majority Native American community. I felt like I stood out all the time, and it was really challenging for me to learn even a little bit of Navajo. Yet I learned more about God in the Navajo community, and I saw the ways that God's presence was revealed in nature and in the gift of a tight-knit community. Working there as an intensive care nurse, I also saw a lot of suffering. I took care of a 19-year-old young man who died from a drug overdose, and I cared for many teenagers who had attempted suicide. I wrestled with, how do I follow Jesus in the midst of so much despair? And I wondered, how can I best care for my patient's spiritual needs? God's invitations for me to be stretched continued. And as I came on staff with InterVarsity to serve with Nurses Christian Fellowship as a campus minister, 
I had much to learn about what does it look like to walk alongside students as they follow Jesus in nursing school. I wanted them to see their role as a nurse was to be like the friends that we see in Mark 2, the friends who lowered their paralyzed friend through the roof right in front of Jesus. Together, the students and I would look at Jesus' example of how he cares for people. We prayed for their patience together, and we asked God to guide them in their nursing care. I joined a group of friends to help plant a multi-ethnic church on the south side of the city in Chicago. And I learned there from friends who had experiences of injustice every day, injustice that I, as a white woman, don't experience. I realized that I was unaware of my own ignorance around white privilege and power. God's invitation to me was to be stretched and to stay in that place of being stretched instead of retreating back to what might have been more comfortable. And as someone who likes to fix problems, I'm continuing to realize that often I just need to listen and to say, tell me more. And then join in lament with others, crying out to God about the injustice and the pain that we experience in the world while still holding on to his hope. Now God's invitation to me has been to enter into a new season, currently serving as an area director with InterVarsity's graduate and faculty ministry. I have the privilege of coming alongside students and faculty as they discover what it looks like to love Jesus in their own areas of work. What does it look like to follow Jesus as a business student or as someone serving in healthcare? And also, how do I learn more about God because of my work? How does that influence my faith? I started a spiritual practice of asking God in the mornings what his invitation was for me that day. And as I look back through my journal, I see a lot of patterns, invitations to enter his rest, invitations to listen. So what about you? Today I want to ask, what does it look like for you to respond to God's invitation? He's already inviting us to be a part of the work that he's doing in the world. So is there an opportunity that you have to be stretched in a new way? Is he inviting you to take a risk to pursue your dreams? I'm going to pray for you now and ask you to stand um, and receive this benediction with me. Jesus, you extend the invitation for us to follow you. As you continue to invite us to be a part of your kingdom work in the world, Lord, we pray that you would show us the invitations that you extend to us. And now receive this blessing from the Lord. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into these doors. Amen. Go in peace.